metal thing and glue it to a big piece of wood, which I did years ago. So I have wood, plywood, I think it's great. And I only take it to make it dry. I think I might show someone with my good part. Sorry, I was talking about my clipboard. Uh, normally, I've hidden the clipboard back here, so it doesn't bother all you people at home. Welcome to 2010, to Season 7 of Keith Explains. It's a whole new Keith Explains. And by that, I mean we're going to try to make the show good this year. So maybe we can win an award. Although we won't win an award because the show is not good. Is the, is the feedback I continue to get from the show nominating slash giving award committee. Uh, they say things like, Keith, keep your day job. Which I would have to because this job doesn't pay anything. I mean, you, you can't, this can't be my job because there's no paycheck. Uh, other than merchandise. I do endorse a lot of merchandise. Uh, I was reading today. Apparently there are celebrities on Twitter that get like $10,000 for mentioning something in their tweets. And I'm like, I have Twitter. I wonder what I could get for mentioning products. And then I did the math and I went, I should keep my day job. I don't think anyone will pay anything. Anyway, like I said, it's, it's a new... It's season seven of Keith Explains, which means all the show numbers will start with seven now. Because people have written in and said, I saw you were on show 611. I haven't seen 611 episodes of Keith Explains. Can you explain that? And yes, yes I can. Which is, see, that first number is, is the year of the show. And then the second number, in general, is the month we taped it. Because that way I can remember, like when I look at show 611, I can go, oh, I probably taped that in November, unless I screwed up when I was writing the numbers and the tapes in the first place, which I have done once or twice. Uh, I believe I had two episode 404s for some reason. <laughs> Caused me some confusion because I would edit it for a while, and then I would go back and edit it for a while and be like, where was all that stuff I remember talking about? It was in the other one. Anyway, as, as part of the new... Everything is new for Keith Explains now, except for me. Uh, and most of the crew is still... I, I guess the only really new thing is we got a new microphone from the studio. Uh, they brought it in. They were like, this is a new microphone. And I'm like, great. And they're like, it's never been used before. And I'm like, how do I know? I mean, what if someone's... And they're like, no, look, it's, it's still got the original factory twist tie on it. So I got to take the original factory twist tie off the new microphone cable before I plugged it in. So no one has ever talked into this microphone before. I'm the first to have used this microphone to broadcast sound on television. And I assume I'm ruining it. And it will never be useful to anyone else again. Anyway, uh, new microphone. Um, I have new shoes. Uh, I would hold my shoe up to show you. But I'm old and no longer flexible. Um, I did it once. Uh, they're ordinary Adidas shoes. I got them from Zappos. I am uncompensated by Zappos, unless someone at Zappos wants to now send me money. I suppose I could Twitter it. Got new shoes from Zappos. And wait for the... Anyway, I got new shoes. As you recall, the last time I mentioned shoes on the show, it was because I had gotten adult Heelys, shoes with wheels, and I was the happiest man in the world because I could roll around on my shoes You'll notice these are not adult Heelys. I would like to say I smartened up and realized I am too old to have shoes with wheels. But no, they don't make adult Heelys anymore. There was like apparently a six month window when you could get adult shoes with wheels and I bought shoes with wheels during that period. They don't make them no more. So my, my pair of adult Heelys that I still have at home, that's it, I can't get them again which is bad because they're freaking fun. I mean, I knew it was the future when I could buy shoes with wheels. Sure, there were no jetpacks, there were no flying cars, but at least I could have shoes with wheels to roll around flat surfaces on. I was happy. Also, I got new glasses. Here, I'll, I'll show them to you. Watch it. People say, Keith, why didn't I ever see you on the street? Because in reality, I wear glasses. And so when I have glasses on, I look totally, totally different. 
And people can, they're like, oh, you don't look at all like Keith. So if you see me on the street, this is what I would look like. Okay? But on the show, I wear contacts. So when I put these glasses on, everything went ungodly fuzzy. <laughs> and, and for a while, I was always scared because I'd put my contacts in and then just out of habit, I would put my glasses on. I'm like, good Lord, I've destroyed my eyes because I had <laughs> two levels of lenses between me and the world. And then it occurred to me that when I don't have my contacts in and I don't have my glasses on, that's exactly the same as having two levels of lenses, really. I mean, that's all the lenses are bending the world is just how blind I am. So it's not going to kill me to have two levels of lenses on briefly. Um, although I did kind of do a little bit of math to make sure that they wouldn't focus all the light to a tiny bit point in the back of my eyes like a laser. But they don't. Uh, these are new glasses. I just got them like three or four days ago because I went to my eye doctor and, you know, hi, it's a year later. How am I doing? And she's like, well, your prescription got a little worse. We're going to get you some new glasses. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I shouldn't have said, yeah, whatever. Because <laughs> I seem to recall she said something about, yeah, it's you've gotten a little bit, a little bit worse. We're going to kind of you know, we're going to try and bring your focus in to 2020, whatever, et cetera, et cetera, yada, yada, yada. I wasn't paying attention. When I got these glasses, I discovered they, I have gotten blind enough and old enough that my focus can't be here where I read books anymore. It's now out here where old people read books. <laughs> so like I got the new glasses and I put them on. I'm like, this is great. Everything's in focus really far away. I can see the trees. And then, like, I got back to my office, and I pulled out my phone, and I was like, let's look at that. <laughs> okay, I can read the email. I mean, it's a good thing I have regular length arms, because otherwise I could no longer <laughs> hold things far enough away to read. <sighs> so then I went back and ordered glasses that are focused differently so I can hold things closer to read. I've gotten them yet. So for the moment, I'm stretching my arms whenever I read anything because I'm old. And that's what old people do. Luckily, I don't have the bifocals yet. Where apparently, you know, they, different parts of your lenses are focused differently. So not only do you have to hold things far away, you have to tilt your head back to read. Which... That's why old people do this, I figured out. It's like you see them and they're like reading something and you're like, why are they doing... Not because they're angry or dumb, it's because the world has conspired against them. And evolution has failed. You know, in a sense, you're like, evolutionarily, my eyes should never go bad. Except they do. I'm like, well, what the heck happened? They're like, well, I don't have kids, so evolutionarily, I'm a dead end. Anyway, look, we're like 19 minutes into the show, and I have really not talked anything. <laughs> well, I guess I did talk about the new show studio microphones um it's been a topic on the show uh people have said keith you keep saying the show's not good but it seems okay to us passably barely okay we maybe will watch another one if we have half an hour free and you pay us <laughs> and i'm like um i can't pay you again i make no money off the show except for the many twitters i'm gonna be twittering like mad about Zappos and uh, oh, who makes eyeglasses? I guess I get to. People said, Keith, you talk about how great the show is, really. And I'm like, yeah, the show's great. I'm like, no, it's only okay. And I'm like, well, here's what you have to remember. See, I, the way I come up with ideas for the show generally involves me being in the shower. So I get up in the morning, <laughs> like the three or four days before the show, and I'll be standing in the shower and I'll be showering. I'm not going to describe showering so we can keep our PG rating. But I'll be showering, and then I will think of a great idea for the show. And I'll think of something I can talk about on the show or some topic. And I'll be like, yeah, I could say this and this and this. And I have a lot of ideas because it's early in the morning and I'm still awake. Or I've just woken up so I'm not sleepy. Uh, I mean, there's hot water surrounding me, happy steam. I'm clean, mostly. Because I have just soaped up. That is the peak of my day, really. 
That's what I remember about the show. I remember all the really great things I think about in the shower that I could talk about in the show. Unfortunately, in the shower, you don't have a pen and paper. And if you did, it would be wet and wouldn't work. And so all of those ideas get forgotten. And eventually we end up with Thursday, the night of the show, and I have to think of stuff to talk about. And there's this mad scramble of me writing crap on pieces of paper with a red or black pen. Uh, well, I could maybe talk about glasses or something. <laughs> the show in my head is fabulous. It's, it's a multi-award winner in my head. <laughs> Multi-awards. Many, many of them. And, ah, so there's that. Um, someone has said, Keith, can you talk about cats more? Because when you talk about cats, it's hilarious. I don't think it's hilarious when I talk about cats, but I do have cats. And the cats continue to torment me in horrible, horrible ways, which I guess is amusing to people. Uh, lately, one of my cats, the black one, and I have two cats, and I refer to them as the black one and the tan one, because one is black and one is tan. Uh, and if I just call them the obnoxious cat, you don't know which one I'm talking about. They're both obnoxious, but it would be context. The... The black one, for the last couple weeks, has decided she likes to sleep right next to my head. <laughs> now, we, we got a king-size bed a couple months ago, so there is now this spot next to my head on the bed that is no longer covered with pillows, because we just have queen-size pillows on a king-size bed, so there's like 12 inches at each side of the headboard of the bed, maybe, between the pillows, and the cat likes to sleep there right next to my head like if i'm laying on my side it's keith pillow cat okay <laughs> if i had my eyes open i don't have my eyes open because when i'm awake the cat doesn't sleep there but the moment i fall asleep the cat apparently likes to move there <laughs> and i don't know why i have a theory which is when we got the king size bed i also put in a mattress pad heater now, the bed is covered with comforters, but it's hot because I have the mattress heater thingy on. But the spot next to my head doesn't have a comforter on top of it. So if the cat sleeps there, the cat's sleeping on the hot part of the bed, and it's making the cat happy. And it's making me ungodly unhappy because when the cat is happy, the cat flicks its little tail around. Little, look, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. My tail's going like a... Okay. When you've got a cat here with a happy tail, what you've got is a cat whapping you in the head with a happy tail all night long. It's a wonder I don't feel rested in the morning. And so I will push the cat off my bed, and I will explain to the cat, look, I paid for this bed. You aren't sleeping here. Okay. Lately, I have decided that talking to the cat is not working. <laughs> So now I have to put my pillows where the cat wants to be. So like I put my pillow at the corner of the bed where the cat wants to sleep, and I'm like, that's where I put my head. And then the cat will come by and go, I would like, oh, someone, I wonder if I could find some way to sleep there. And maybe, maybe I could wedge my body in somewhere up there. Oh, I don't know if it would work. Okay. On the other hand, I'm sleeping in the most uncomfortable position on my bed possible because I have to crane my neck up to the corner. I'm at an angle. There's... <sighs> the other cat, as I've mentioned before, likes to meow a lot. And he meows because he wants me to know it's time to feed him. <laughs> Except we feed the cat at 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock in the morning, 7 o'clock at night. Now, the cat doesn't have a wristwatch, and if he did, he doesn't know how to tell time. <laughs> so, I get up sometime between 7 and 9 in the morning, and I go to work, and then I come home sometime between 6 and 8 o'clock at night. The cat has decided that the shorthand way to know what time it is is if the cat has seen me recently and the cat hasn't eaten recently, it must be time for the cat to get fed. 
because it's probably right around the time for the cat to get fed. So if the cat sees me, he thinks time to start meowing to remind him to feed me <laughs> as if I would forget. <laughs> now this, if I were getting home from work at 6.50, would be great. I would get home, the cat would look at me, the cat would meow once, and I would say, ah, yes, time to feed you. And I would go get a can of food, put it in the cat's food dish. Everyone would be happy. But I don't get home at 10 to 7. Sometimes I'll get home at 5 o'clock and the cat will go, look, you're here, time to feed me, and start <laughs> meowing. And then the cat will follow me around for two hours, meowing. Because, <laughs> of course, the cat knows I have forgotten to feed it, even though feeding time has come and gone. And I... If only he could meow louder or bump his little head against my legs more directly, he would convince me that it was I had neglected to feed him at the appropriate time, okay? On the weekends, sometimes I don't leave home. So the cat sees me at noon and thinks, there's that food guy, and starts meowing at me. And then I have seven hours of being meowed at. Christmas, we got Loretta a cat stroller. Mm -hmm. And people look at me and say, cat stroller? And I said, it's like a stroller for your cat. And then they go, the cat pushes the stroller? <laughs> no, the cat goes in the stroller. It's, And they're like, oh, it's a stroller for your cat. I'm like, that's what I said. No, they said, no, you said it was a stroller for your cat. Like your cat would push the People are dumb. Um, <laughs> we got a cat stroller so that we can take our cats for walks. And I explained this to someone at work, and they said, that must be nice, the cat gets some exercise. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, no, the, the cat gets pushed. The person pushing the cat gets some exercise, but the cat really just sits down and, and sees the world move past the cat, which... I assume it is every cat's dream. <laughs> Except not our cat, because he doesn't like the cat stroller, because it involves him doing something that wasn't his idea. <laughs> so we got a cat stroller so we can take our cat on a walk or on a push again. Cat goes in the stroller, we push the cat around the block, and then we get home and let the cat out of the stroller. And I, I don't really know what the cat gets out of it, uh, after I bought Loretta the cat stroller, I thought, couldn't we put a stuffed cat toy, a little stuffed pet in the cat stroller and get the same value out of cat strolling? See, I did that page. <laughs> Here's a request that I got by email. Someone said, Keith, can you explain geeks and cell phones? And I thought, yes, yes, I can. Mm -hmm. But he had more suggestions. <laughs> His was... Why do geeks have so many cell phones? And I'm not going to mention who this is, but everyone here knows who I'm talking about. This is a person that has like seven cell phones. Like one of each brand, and sometimes more than one of each brand, which he carries around, so that he always has several cell phones near him. And I thought, wow, that is very incredibly geeky. You know, you have two iPhones and a Droid and a Nexus and a Verizon something. So that, like, if you don't have reception, that means there's been a nuclear war. <laughs> and we're all about to die because you're on every conceivable network. And he's got different numbers for each of them. So he's, like, he really has no excuse. Like, you, he can't say, oh, I was on the line when you called. Because you just call him on another number, right? I mean, if, if you call him and it goes to voicemail, you're like... Oh, he must be talking to someone on the first phone. I'll call the second phone. And then if you call the second phone and it goes straight to voicemail, you got to think, wow, someone else also thought about calling him on the second number. And he's talking to both of them now, <laughs> one on each ear. And so you'd call him on the third phone. And then, then it would get fun, I'm thinking. <laughs> if only you could see him. And someone said, why... Why would people do this? And, and I agree, most people wouldn't. Like, if, if you tried to tell my mother she should get a second cell phone, she would look at you with an expression. Like, what would I possibly do with a second phone? 
I'm like, well, maybe the other phone would have features the first phone wouldn't have. And then she'd say, like, features? Because <laughs> it hasn't occurred to my mother that a cell phone can really do anything besides make phone calls. Like, my mother bought a new cell phone. This was a couple of years ago. And, you know, I was showing it to her. I was like, do you ever take pictures with a camera? And she's like, it's got a camera? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that's what that big button with the camera on the side does. She's like, oh. So I was like, let's look at your pictures. So I go into the menu and you click the little photos and you're like, look, you have 170 pictures on here. <laughs> <laughs> and then I thought, well, what, what could, she, she didn't know there was a phone in here. She didn't know there was a camera on the phone, so what could they possibly be? So I started to look through them. And they're all essentially the inside of her pocket. <laughs> Every once in a while, there'd be a blurry one of the side of her head. Probably because she pushed the button when she picked it up to answer instead of whatever. I was like, you can take pictures with this phone. They're crappy pictures, but you won't know. <laughs> I don't think she ever used She's like, oh, that's so convenient. I'm like, yes, that would be convenient if you knew it was there. As is, it's just you spending money on something stupid. Anyway, I, I only have one cell phone. So briefly, I thought, I don't think all geeks buy multiples of things. I think it's just this one guy. And then I kind of generalized it and realized I have like six video game systems in my house. <laughs> I have more video game systems in my house than I have potential inputs in my television. So I have had to actually pack video game systems away, not because I didn't want to play them, but because I don't want to have to change cables to play them. <laughs> and because I really no longer had room in the large cabinet in front of the television to put all the game systems I have. I have the PS3, I have the Wii, I have the Xbox 360, I have the PS2 in the attic, I have the PS1 in the attic, I have it on here. Oh, well. Speaking of things in the attic, um, I now have a big box of cables in my attic. I have a big box of cables in my attic because I've been having a bunch of remodeling done around the house, and so I had to clean out my computer room. And as part of cleaning out my computer room, I have this closet. And in the closet, I have a bunch of drawers, and in the drawers, I keep cables. Anyone that's ever kept cables in drawers knows eventually you can't find the cables you have. So you assume, I must not have that cable, so you go buy another one. But as it turns out, you did have that cable. It was just in the drawer, and you couldn't find it. I had to take everything in that room out and put it in a bunch of buckets. And then after they were done painting, I had to take all the buckets and put them back. And then I had to put them back in the drawers. But if I'm going to put cables in drawers, I'm going to sort them. So I took all these buckets with my cables and I sat on the floor and I threw cables into little piles like put the USB cables over there put the firewire cables there we'll put the video cables there we'll put the uh, coax cables there and eventually I'm sitting in a room surrounded by these huge heaps of cables uh, specifically I had I'm probably going to mess this up I think I had 27 firewire 400 cables Whoa. No one needs 27 FireWire 400 cables unless you run a video editing company in the late 1990s. <laughs> I need maybe three FireWire cables, and that's stretching it. Because I don't think I really have much that does FireWire anymore except the camera that I edit this show on. And that wasn't in any of the piles because it was already plugged into the computer. Um, I had something like 30 USB cables. I don't know why I have 30 USB cables, but I remember distinctly about three months ago thinking, I can't find any USB A to B cables. I should buy. Next time I order from Monoprice, I'm going to have them throw in like five of each USB cable because they're three bucks a piece. And that way I'll always have them. Now I will always have USB cables because I, I, I don't have enough power coming out of my circuit board to drive enough USB devices for all the cables I have. And whenever you buy anything, it comes with a cable. 
And then I thought, what could I possibly do with all these cables? I know, I'll give them away on Craigslist. And then it occurred to me that that would just drive me mad because I'd be like, I have USB cables, and people would be like, can I come get them? I'd be like, yes, and then they wouldn't come. <laughs> and I'd be angry. Um, I don't have a lot of time left, so I'm going to talk about a couple other things briefly. Eric, someone asked about this. They say, Keith, why do you always have those papers in the show? And I was like, well, I write the topics on them, you know. They're like, we, we know that, but why are they like half pieces of paper instead of regular paper that people think of as paper? And here's the thing. See, when I get a piece of paper, like here's a piece of paper. See, it has a bunch of topics on it which I printed out from my website, and then I looked through those topics and thought, I could talk about that tonight. So I took the piece of paper, and I folded it in half. See? Clever. And then I could write things on the piece of paper. If I had left the piece of paper big and tried to write on it, I would not be able to do it. Because I look at a big piece of paper, and I think, that piece of paper is too big. I can't do anything with it. It scares me. But if I fold it in half and turn it, that's, that's how big my brain is, okay? My brain is half a piece of paper with big letters on it written, maybe three or four things big. Okay, that, that is a piece of paper that I can understand. This, this that just terrifies me. Like, I, I would look at this piece of paper and not be able to do a darn thing. I once read about a philosopher who was like, I would get up in the morning and walk downstairs to my office and I would take a piece of paper out and I would put it down to write the next part of my philosophical treatise and I would stare at that blank piece of paper all day and at the end of the day I would go back up to bed and the paper would still be blank because I had nothing to write. And I thought, well, why didn't you just fold it in half? <laughs> then it's smaller. You don't have to cover as much stuff, and you still get a nice sense of accomplishment from having written stuff on it. Um, here, I'm going to mention this very quickly. People, you are putting too much stuff on Facebook I don't want to read about. Um, <laughs> if you have something coming out of you, <laughs> like a sore of some kind, don't put it on Facebook. <laughs> Uh, that's it for the year, I guess. I'm not going to get to origami again. Uh, oh. Maybe next time. It's been lovely. Uh, come back, watch the rest of the year. It's only uphill from here. Uh, I guess we go to that camera for the end. See, now we get the great shot at the end that I run the credits on. the official Keith Explains music going on.